Hello and welcome to the first video for the module on Cartesian geometry. And here we're going to be reviewing geometry in two dimensions and how it's used in some of the common ways that you're going to need in university mathematics. We want to start with the geometry of, of two dimensions, as I said, of the plane. I'm going to refer to the two dimensions as simply the plane. Now this is Cartesian geometry, so we're going to use coordinates, and I want to talk about how coordinates are set up. And coordinates are a remarkable invention that let us identify points in the plane by numbers. So let me be very, very clear on the setup here. Again, I imagine this is mostly familiar, but the terminology and the notation might be different from the way you originally used it. So I want to be very, very explicit to go over exactly how this setup works, what the terms are that you would typically be used in uh, an English-Canadian university math situation. So the plane. The plane is a two-dimensional environment. We're going to set a point in the plane called the origin, which we'll think of as the center, some point. And from that, we're going to draw two perpendicular lines, one vertical and one horizontal. By convention, the horizontal line is going to be identified with the variable x, and the vertical line is going to be identified with the variable y. These can be identified with other variables in other situations, but if you're just thinking about shapes, these are the conventional variables. These horizontal and vertical lines are called axes. The horizontal line is called the x-axis. The vertical line is called the y-axis. And there is measurement along those axes. So that's what these dashes are showing on the axis, is that we can move a certain number of units in the axes. By convention, moving to the right and moving up is positive. So this direction is positive, this direction is positive. Moving in the other direction, this direction is negative this direction is negative. And that's just entirely convention. There's no reason that it had to be that way. You have to set a convention for axis and decide which direction is positive and negative. And these are the conventions that we have set. These are the conventions that we work with. All right, so we have an origin, we have axes, we have distance along those axes, and that lets us understand points with coordinates. So a point in the Cartesian plane is identified by a pair of numbers the first pair is its position in the x-axis. The second pair is its position in the y-axis. So if I look at this point uh, 3, 6, if I go over 1, 2, 3, and go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I get the point that sits exactly 3 units over in x and 6 units up in y. If I look at this point down here, if I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, Go down one, two, three, four, because the y coordinate is negative. Negative means downwards. I get the point that sits at four units to the positive in the x axis, four units to the negative in the y axis. And likewise, over five down two gives me negative five, negative two. And over seven up seven gives me negative seven, seven. Negative because I'm going left, positive. I'm going up. So the x coordinate is negative, the y coordinate is positive. And in this way I can identify any possible points in the plane. So again, these numbers are called the coordinates of the points, and the coordinates indicate the location of the point along the axis. And this invention allows us to do a great deal of calculation with points in the plane, lets us use all of the tools of algebra to describe shapes which is a remarkable breakthrough in the history of mathematics, makes Cartesian coordinates one of the fundamental things that we use over and over and over again to understand functions, to understand shapes, to understand all sorts of things in geometry and in algebra.